And the key verse comes from Proverbs 22 and 4, and it reads, By humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Amen. And so let's read this lesson today. <clears throat> it's a living God. That's the name of this topic today, a living God. And it reads, he had gone to church as a young boy. However, in growing older, he strayed from the things of God. After a short term in the military, he took a job with a large company and relaxed. He had job security, a lovely wife, and children. What more could he want? That was 1950. Since then, things have changed dramatically. The security he once enjoyed waned. Economic changes forced him into an early retirement. He never prayed or asked God for wisdom, thinking instead that religious stuff isn't for me. Yet in secret, he hoped his life was good enough to earn him a spot in heaven. Many things are lacking in this man's life. The most obvious is salvation. There is also a lack of understanding of who God is. The writer of Proverbs asserted, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding, Proverbs 9 and 10. People who do not fear God do not really know him. Only when you take time to know God do you realize he is personal, loving, and a living God who is active in every area of life. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, now is the right time to make that decision. Or if your fellowship has grown cold, ask him to restore the intimacy of your personal relationship. And all together at the bottom, Father, let me come to know you in an intimate way. Renew the warmth of my fellowship with you. Amen. And this is another great lesson, uh, brothers and sisters. This is another great lesson is that we serve a living God. And as you read this uh, lesson here, we've all been where this young boy and young man has been. He went to church as a young lad. And when he got older, he strayed away from God. We've all been there. We've all done it. We all fall short of the glory of God. It says, and he went through the military and he got a, a job with a large company and relaxed. Yes, he relaxed. He had job security, a loving wife, and children. What more could he want? He had it all, he thought. But he didn't have God in his life. And it says in 1950, things start to change. And it start to change dramatically. The security, what he once enjoyed, waned away as we see today in our lives. Things are changing ever so fast all around us. The economic changes forced him into early retirement, which is happening today. The economic changes where uh, teachers don't want to teach no more. Everybody wants to do everything online. They don't want that personal relationship with no one anymore. Everybody wants to, let's stream it online. Let, I don't want to be around people. And that's what's happening today. And what truly is happening is he never prayed or asked God for wisdom. Thinking instead that religious stuff isn't for me. And boy, is that a doozy because that is exactly what's happening today in today's society. We have waned, we have gone away, strayed away from God, period, and doing the things that man would have us to do. And that's the thing that we must understand. God wisdom is greater than anything that we could do because God thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And we need to understand that we serve a God that <clears throat> understands us better than we understand ourselves. Um, in Isaiah 55 and 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my way, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And that's what we must understand, understand that 
God's ways are not our way. And we, his wisdom is not like our wisdom. His thinking is not uh, the way we think. <laughs> because we think, uh, we don't think in eternity. We think in right now. We got a right now type of thinking. But we serve a living God who's, who sees us as he sits high and low. This earth is the footstool of the, of the Lord. And we need to understand that we serve a living God. Jesus just didn't die on the cross. He rose again on the third day, as the Bible says. He rose on the third day, and he was risen by the Father, and he sits at the right hand of him. And we need to understand that. It says here that that religious stuff, that the guy says the religious stuff isn't for me. And really, God doesn't care about religion. God cares about the relationship you have with him. It's not about religion. It's about your relationship you have with God. And we serve a living God. Um, it says here, yet in secret he hoped his life was good enough to earn him a spot in heaven. Isn't that sad? A lot of people think that way. I hope I'm having a good enough life. I hear people a lot of times when I ask them, are people say when they're talking to me about other people, and they go, well, he's a good person. I go, wow, okay. Have you received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior? Well, no, he's a good person. Okay, so he hasn't received Christ. No, but he, he does good things. Okay, well, he probably helps people and he does good things and all of that. But is it going to come a time when he has to stand before a holy God? And I hope he received Christ. And I hope someone tells him about Jesus Christ and he received Christ as his Lord and Savior. Because there is nobody. Uh, the Bible makes it very clear in Romans uh, 3 and 23, that we all fall short of the glory of God. And we need to understand we all fall short. We're all in the same boat. Just as we are all in the same, whatever thing that is going on in this world, we're all affected by it. No matter what goes on in this world, we're all going to be affected by what goes on, the circumstances and the situation that goes on in this world. And we need a living Savior. We need a, a living God, the true living God, to uh lead us through what we're going through. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can find this real quick. Second uh, Chronicle. Oh, give me a second here, people. I know it's something I want to share with you. Second Chronicle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Second Chronicles, seventh chapter. Uh, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Second Chronicles, I think it's the 15th chapter, excuse me. Uh, Okay, yeah, Second Chronicles, the 15th chapter, and that third, we'll go to the second verse down to the fourth verse, I think that's the Holy God. And it reads, and he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you, and while ye be with him, and if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God. Hear that? And without a teaching priest, and without uh, law. But when they in their trouble did turn Unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Oh, and then I'm going to go down to five. He said, And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but a great vexation were upon all and the inhabitants of the country. Just like we're going through now, great vexation is going on right now. We got a pandemic going on. And no one is seeking the true God. 
It says right there, no one sought the true God, and God said, I will be with you. But if you're not seeking a true living God, if you're just going about this world hoping to find uh, your way out of things, hoping that uh, things change in your life without God, like this guy, he hoped his life was good enough. Your life is never going to be good enough. We're all dysfunctional creatures. We all messed up, some major, some minor, but we're all messed up. We all got issues and it's you. It ain't just the issues, it's, it's you, it's us, it's in us. And because we were born in iniquity, we were shaped in this iniquity of this world. And so our spirits need to be born again. We need to be made alive. And so, we need God in our life. We need a living Savior. And God has made a way when he gave his son, his only begotten son. We shed his blood because it was only his blood that could redeem us all because his son was unblemished. He was that unblemished lamb. And so we need to understand that <clears throat> we need God in our life. We need to give our, our life back to the one that gave us life. Amen. And so... It says, many things are like it in this man's life. There's many things like it in a lot of people's life. And the most, it says the most obvious is salvation. But what is salvation? Salvation is the work of God by which he rescues sinners, bound for hell, grants forgiveness because of what Christ has done on the cross. It's what was done on the cross. It's nothing you've done. It's nothing that you can do. Your blood is tainted. Nobody, your blood can't save even yourself. He said, there is also a lack of understanding who God is. And if you're not born again, you don't know who God is. Even after you've been born again, you got to learn of him. As he says in Matthew 11, uh, chapter 11, verses 28 and 30, that we must learn of him. Uh, because uh, his burdens are, his yoke is, his burdens are easy and his yoke is light. And so we need to understand that God wants us to come to him, come to him and be forgiven. It's a free gift from God, free gift from God. Proverbs 9 and 10 says, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so we need to understand that we need to come to him. Uh, you can't get around it. It says people who do not fear God do not really know him. And that is a truism right there. If they don't know God, they don't fear him because they don't know how awesome God is. He's a living God and he's watching everything we do. Every day is a new day. Every day when you ask for forgiveness, God gives you a blank a sheet of paper to start recording on that sheet of paper everything that you're doing that day. That's why your book comes start from this little tiny book and it's going to be books open. So it don't tell how many books are going to open up. It's on how long you live. You may have, if you're 63 like me, you're going to have 63 volumes. That's right, because there's that many, that's my stuff that I do all day. It's going to be recorded. If you're 50 something, you're going to have 50 volumes. Don't think it that you're not, because that's how it works. At least I'm thinking that's how it works, because it's going to be a bunch of books. It's going to be two books, he said. But it's going to be a whole bunch. That's all with your name on. It says here, um, God, okay, only when you take time to know God do you realize he is personal, loving, a living God who is active in every area of your life. And that's just it. People, they, some people want God to be in their life and some people don't. And then some people don't go any further than I've been saved. Well, you got to go a little further because you want to you want to know him you want to take that time to know him just like you take the time to know that pretty little lady that you want to get with or that handsome young man you want to get with you need to spend time to get to know that person don't just shack up and move in with somebody you don't know what they're all about because you find out quickly that uh i made a mistake and then you get caught up in that you know uh why did i do why me and so we need to learn to, uh, to take the time to know who God is. And how do you do that? By getting in a Bible study, by reading the word of God, by asking the questions of the text, 
by the word because the Holy Spirit indwells with those who've been born again. You indwell with the Spirit of God, and He's just willing to share all He has. Uh, because He knows God. Uh, in the beginning he was the word, and the word was God, and the word, and you know, it, it goes way back to Genesis, Genesis, my oh Lord. And so you need to understand that God is with us at all times. Um, and that's Emmanuel. They used to call him Emmanuel. God is with us. And we got to understand that God is always with us. And we need to understand that God wants to have a personal uh, contact with us. He wants to be personal. I mean, if we can bring anything to God, he's loving. He forgives us of all our sins every day. But you got to repent every day or uh, every two, three hours, depending on how messed up you are. You know, this is, this is not a, an easy walk. I mean, and it's not a hundred yard sprint. This is a marathon. So you probably said, I never ran a marathon. Well, get me God. He'll teach you how to, to walk with him. He'll teach you how to, 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 to talk with him. And so we need to understand that we need to do that. Um, he's a living God. And that's what this lesson is all about, a living God, someone who will answer us. And we have to have the ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us. God is speaking to us every day, yet we don't hear him because we don't take the time to spend that time, quiet time with him, to let him speak to our hearts, mind, and soul, because we need to be spoken to. God is ready. God is ready. The question is, are you ready? And you need to be ready. Amen? He says here, if you never accepted Christ as your Savior, now is the right time to make that decision. When is the best time to accept Christ right now? Right now, when someone is telling you about Jesus right now, that I'm telling you right now, you might be saying, well, I don't know, I might want to wait. But I don't think you might want to do that. Because nobody, you know, in the next 30 minutes ain't promised to you. The next 30 minutes, the next five seconds ain't promised to you. You don't know what's going on inside of you. Your ear might be just cut off. You might just have a heart attack. I hope it doesn't happen. But if you do, you know, and you haven't received the Lord, you're going to stand before a holy God and go like, give me time, and you didn't get accepted. And so the best time to accept him is right now. You need to make that decision to accept him and to learn of who he is. Um, to have a personal relationship with you because he wants to have one with you. He says, or if your fellowship has grown cold. And we do that. We grow cold. But you know, it's like, well, God ain't, well, y'all you know, ain't answered my prayer. When I first received him, he was the bam, bam, thing was happening. Now nothing's happening. Well, you need to grow more and more. And maybe you walk away from him. Maybe it's you and not the Lord. It's, I know it's you. I know for a fact it's you, it ain't God. So God extends his name every day to all of those who have been born Even to those who aren't saved, God extended his name to those, um, to all of us. As it says in Isaiah 65, and let's see, where am I? In Isaiah 65 and 2, I think. Oh, I might be on this. this is chapter 65. 65. Oh. Um, yes, 65 and 2, he says, I have spread out my hand all day long to a rebellious people who walk in the way which is not good, following their own thought. A people who continually provoke me to my face, offering sacrifice in gardens and in burnings, uh, incense on bricks, who sit among graves and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh, and the broth of unclean meat is in their pots. Oh my God. So God is saying, I'm standing here all day with outstretched hands, my hands spread out to each and every one of you. And we need to understand that God is a living God, extending his hands to us every day to come closer, come closer, you know? And we need to understand that we need to come closer to God. 
You probably say, well, I'm pretty close. No, they're not close enough. God said, come close. Come close. You need to be like John, laying your head upon his chest. You need to just want to be um, hearing his heartbeat with children. He says, or, or maybe you, you need to restore your intimacy and your personal relationship because you, uh, you're straddling the fence. And so you need to say a prayer uh, to ask God to restore you to that personal relationship. God will do it. Because God says he will see you through anything. And God knows it. Because we serve a living God. And so we need to uh, uh, ask God to come back and to have fellowship with us and we fellowship with him. Because, you know, once you start meeting with God, God's going to always be there. God is never going to say, oh, I can't make it today. He never says that to any of us. It's always us going, you know, I let the lady a few more minutes longer. God going, well, you know, we got an appointment here at 5 a.m. You know, we know we need it at this time, but I'll give you 30 more minutes. So God can get an hour. I'll give you an hour, but I'm still going to meet you at 5. I'll wait. And I thank God for waiting on all of us. You know, I'm thanking God for never giving up on all of us because he's that living God. He's our Father. He's our Father. He's our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Yes, thank you, Lord, for being out of heaven and God. And so we have a living God who loves us with an unconditional love, who wants us to know that He is still alive. He's not on the cross no more. He's raised up and He sits at the right hand of the Father. Yeah, we need to know that we have a living Savior. God has given His Son authority here on earth as it is in heaven. And we need to understand that. We can trust in him. We can go to him. And we can call on him. And you need to know that you can call on um, a living Savior. You don't, you don't call on a dead Savior. And God, you don't have a dead Savior. So what does a dead Savior do? He's not good at all. But he's not a Savior if he's dead. So we want to thank Jesus for dying on that cross. But we want to thank the Father for bringing him back to life. And he lives right now. Amen. And so that's all I have to say on this lesson because we do serve a living God. And salvation is free because Jesus died for us. Amen. And he rose again. He's a living Savior. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And you need to uh, uh, get in touch with him. You need to be saved. You need to be get your BA. And what's that BA? Born again. I don't mean no, no college. That's born again. You need to be born again. All right? And so if you're not born again, um, you can be right now, this day. And so we thank you for joining us. We thank you for uh, allowing us to come into your homes today. Um, but I had one of these little calls. Well, yeah. And if you want to be give your life to Christ, you can do it right now by repeating me after me. And at least, dear God, just repeat after me. Dear God, I admit that I have sinned. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, to take the punishment I deserve. Then you raised him to life again, so that I, I may have eternal life. I turn now from my sins and ask you to forgive me. Please come into my life and be my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. If you read that, uh, if you repeated that, uh, what I just read there, then you are born again. I ask you to find a nice church home that studies the Word of God, the Bible. Bible. And then you start reading it for yourself to learn what thus says the Lord, because God is speaking to you right now. And so I'm Reverend Parker thanking you again for joining us in another choir Bible study. May God bless you. May God keep you. Um, and we'll see you again. The Lord's with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.